Welcome to the Rare History Channel. Decoding Edmund Kemper, 15 Chilling Facts About the Infamous Serial Killer Edmund Kemper, also known as the Coed Killer, is one of the most notorious serial killers in American history. With his towering stature and high IQ, Kemper's heinous crimes sent shockwaves through society. This video unveils 15 startling facts about this chilling figure that further expose the macabre depths of his psyche and his crimes. Fact number 1. Deep-rooted issues from a disturbed childhood. Born on December 18, 1948, in Burbank, California, Edmund Emil Kemper III was no stranger to familial discord. His parents' tumultuous relationship, marked by frequent arguments, led to their divorce when Kemper was just nine years old. Post-divorce, he was primarily raised by his mother, Clarnell Strandberg. Kemper's relationship with his mother was toxic, fraught with emotional and psychological abuse. Clarnell would belittle him frequently, criticize his physical appearance, and confine him to a basement bedroom. This troubling upbringing, steeped in consistent mistreatment and parental neglect, is widely believed to have set the stage for Kemper's later violent behaviors. Number 2. Disturbing Predilections, Early Signs of Violence Violent tendencies marked Kemper's behavior from an alarmingly young age. At the tender age of 10, he killed the family cat and buried it alive in a pet cemetery he'd established. Not satisfied with this macabre act, several years later, he mutilated another family cat, showcasing an escalating pattern of violence. Such early life incidents of cruelty towards animals are often regarded by criminologists as precursors to the violent tendencies seen in serial killers. Number 3. The Gentle Giant with a Dark Side, Monstrous Size Edmund Kemper's physical stature was a striking aspect of his persona. As he matured into adulthood, he grew to an imposing 6 feet 9 inches, tipping the scales at about 250 pounds. This intimidating size, combined with his above-average intelligence, amplified the terror he would later instill as a murderer. His colossal frame not only allowed him physical dominance over his victims but also contributed to the public's morbid fascination with his gruesome acts. Number 4. An Evil Genius, High IQ Edmund Kemper's high IQ of 145, classified as genius or near genius, presents a chilling paradox. His intellectual capacity undeniably played a role in the sophistication of his crimes. Kemper was capable of meticulously planning his horrifying acts, leaving little evidence behind that could link him to his misdeeds. But his high IQ also manifested itself in a more sinister way, manipulation. Throughout his early confinement, following the murder of his grandparents, Kemper was able to convince psychiatrists that he was making substantial improvements. He was even described as being rehabilitated, contributing to his premature release. Kemper's intelligence allowed him to wear the mask of normality, effectively deceiving those around him while he quietly nurtured his monstrous inclinations. Number 5. A Dark Path, Early Murderous Acts The terrifying trajectory of Kemper's violent tendencies reached a chilling climax when he committed his first murders at just 15. On August 27, 1964, Kemper shot his paternal grandparents, Edmund and Maud Kemper, at their California ranch. After shooting his grandmother in the head, he stabbed her multiple times post-mortem an early indication of the brutality he was capable of. Later that day, he killed his grandfather to prevent him from discovering his wife's murder. Following these horrifying acts, Kemper was committed to the Atascadero State Hospital, a facility for the criminally insane, marking the beginning of his long and terrifying association with the criminal justice system. Number 6. A Second Chance, Early Release and Clean Record After the murder of his grandparents, psychiatrists evaluated and diagnosed the 15-year-old Kemper with paranoid schizophrenia. The state sent him to Atascadero State Hospital. Edmund Kemper was released from Atascadero State Hospital when he was just 21 years old. His apparent transformation in behavior, combined with his high intelligence, his IQ was reported to be 145, convinced the hospital staff that he was fit for reintegration into society. 
In a decision that would have terrifying consequences, his juvenile records were expunged, effectively providing him a clean criminal record and a chance at a fresh start. Number 7. A terrifying killing spree, the co-ed murders. Upon his release, Kemper embarked on a murder spree that would send shockwaves through California and earn him the infamous nickname Coed Killer. Over the span of 11 months, from May 1972 to April 1973, Kemper targeted young female hitchhikers, mainly students from coeducational colleges. He manipulated his victims with his seemingly non-threatening demeanor before killing them, underlining the monstrous duality of his personality. Number 8. Gruesome Rituals, A Chilling Modus Operandi Kemper's method of murder was chillingly methodical and shockingly brutal. He would usually drive his victims to secluded areas where he'd overpower and murder them. But the horror did not end there. He would then transport their lifeless bodies to his apartment where he performed horrific acts of necrophilia and dismemberment. These gruesome post-murder rituals amplified the horror of his crimes, illustrating a deeply entrenched sadism. Number 9. Matricide, Killing His Mother The culmination of Kemper's murderous rampage was disturbingly personal. On April 20, 1973, he turned his long-standing resentment and anger towards his mother into a horrifying act of matricide. Kemper bludgeoned his mother, Clarnell Strandberg, to death with a claw hammer while she slept. Following the murder, he decapitated her and used her head as a dartboard in a grotesque display of contempt. Later that day, he invited one of her friends, Sarah Taylor Hallett, to the house and strangled her to death, making her his final victim. These murders marked the end of Kemper's horrifying killing spree and were a shocking testament to the depth of his deranged psyche. Number 10. Turn of Events, The Confession In a shocking twist to his terrifying crime spree, Edmund Kemper did not attempt to flee or deny his crimes. Instead, he drove from California to Pueblo, Colorado, where he made a phone call to the Santa Cruz police to confess his heinous acts. Despite the gruesome nature of his confession, the officers on duty dismissed it as a prank, finding it hard to believe the man they knew as Big Ed could be capable of such atrocities. Only after his persistent calls did they realize the horrifying truth, leading to his subsequent arrest. This unexpected self-incrimination added an unusual chapter to Kemper's already horrifying tale. Number 11. Behind the courtroom doors, the trial. During his trial, Kemper adopted an insanity plea, claiming that he was not in control of his actions at the time of the murders. The court, however, was not swayed by his defense. After a thorough examination by court-appointed psychiatrists, he was declared legally sane. Ultimately, he was found guilty on eight counts of first-degree murder, which included the murders of his mother and her friend, six college students, and his grandparents. Number 12. A Life Behind Bars, Life in Prison Unlike his life outside, Kemper's life in prison has been reportedly devoid of violence. Sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole, he has been serving his time at the California Medical Facility since 1973. Remarkably, Kemper is described as a model prisoner. He has been actively involved in the prison's educational programs and even held a job preparing audiobooks for the blind, highlighting a stark contrast to his violent past. Number 13. An unwilling contributor, a unique role. Despite his brutal history, Kemper's articulate nature and willingness to detail his crimes have proven beneficial in understanding the minds of serial killers. His explicit recounting of his criminal activities, motivations, and thought processes has offered invaluable insights to the FBI's Behavioral Science Unit. These insights have significantly contributed to the advancement of criminal profiling techniques, helping law enforcement officials predict and hopefully prevent such chilling crimes in the future. Number 14. He terrified many of the people who interviewed him. There's a scene in the first season of Mindhunter where FBI agent Holden Ford visits Ed Kemper to experience a panic attack after he intimidates him. It turns out there's a lot of truth to that scene. Donald Lund, a psychiatrist from Stanford, interviewed him in prison. 
While locked in a room with only Kemper and a panic button, Kemper commented, Has it ever dawned on you that I'm a foot taller and weight damn near twice what you do? Lund hit the panic button, only for guards to come seven minutes later. A similar event happened to FBI agent Robert K. Aressler. Kemper told him that he could rip his head off before guards even got there. Wrestler hit the panic button, only for guards to arrive a half an hour later. Number 15. He's alive and well. Kemper went up for parole in 2007, 2012, and 2017. In 2017, he argued against release, saying that a convicted serial killer shouldn't be allowed back into society. In 2012, he waived his right even to have a hearing. According to his lawyer, he is happy with his life in prison.